the team that takes the field for them today. At fullback, it's Michael Potter. On the wings are Turp and Wade. The centres are Mark Coyne and Michael Beatty. In the halves are Peter Coyne and Noel Goldthorpe. The forwards are Brad Mackay, Scott Goulet, David Barnhill, Guy Pick and Wayne Collins and Tony Priddle. And uh, there's that St George side for you, coached, of course, by Brian Smith. Now Alan Langer takes the Brisbane Broncos out onto the Adelaide Oval and uh, this side today, tremendous talent in their ranks. Let's have a look at them, very strong on paper. At fullback, it's Paul Hoff on the wings of Michael Hancock and Brett Plowman. The centres today are Steve Renoff and Julian O'Neill in the run-on side. The halves are Kevin Walters and Alan Langer and in the pack, it's Terry Madison at lock, Mark Hone, Trevor Gilmeister, second row. Sean Keating, Kerrod Walters and Glenn Lazarus comprise the front row and Wayne Bennett is the coach. Referee for this match is the man that handled State of Origin 1, David Manson. Just a faint breeze coming down the ground from behind St George. Running towards the Sir Donald Bradman stand end at the Adelaide Oval. And uh, this historic match gets underway, the first daytime Winfield Cup ever played. And the youngster Keating gets first touch of the ball. Big lump of the lad, wearing shirt number 43. Peter Sterling joins me today. And of course, Ray, a very important game for both teams. Brisbane in the five at the moment. St George, two points adrift. They will join the Broncos if they can win this afternoon. And that will take them into the five. It's the first mistake is made by the Brisbane team just outside the 22. Walter's not happy. There's the hit. Two St George players going in, picking over the top. And the ball came away from Trevor Gilmeister. First scrum of the match. And it comes away through Peter Coyne to his brother Mark. State of origin on Wednesday night and a very important player in this game today. Well, they must be getting set to go all the way back the other way because they played centre of a centre aside there. They were never going to put anything on against the Broncos' defence this way, but they now have both centres set wide with Tony Priddle out there outside Peter Coyne. Collins is the dummy half. Goldthorpe is the seven. They switch the point of the attack to a wide blind side and Brad Mackay is brought down about 20 metres out from the line. Now they go left. Goldthorpe and away for Peter Coyne. The ball goes loose. Goulet picks it up. It went backwards, says Manson, and he's put down on the 22 line. Five gone for the Dragons. Goldthorpe. Waiting that ball in behind Hancock. What a great game he had on Wednesday night. And he's going to have to be contained here today. Played by Hancock for Langer to give it away. And Keating obligingly comes in for his second hit-up of the game. Kerrod Walters in the number nine, naturally enough. Forwards, a misunderstanding there. Walters takes the tackle. Langer passes and taking it ahead and going out. Another one of the Brisbane forwards. That's Plowman. Ray has come in, both wingers certainly getting involved as Glenn Lazarus hit pretty high there by the number 10 guy picking for St George. We go into the last tackle, will be Walters. No, in fact, it's Julian O'Neill putting one down to the fullback Michael Potter. Certainly can be forgiven for thinking that Plowman is a forward. He's a huge lad. This is Brett Plowman in the side today, not Darren. Mick Potter playing here today, probably for an origin jumper. His name has been bandied about. He's got a chance of uh, picking it up right here in this match today. Captain Beattie plays the ball 32 metres out from his line. Goulet shrugs off one. And he's lost the ball. And it's a penalty to St George for stealing against Brisbane. Well, there was no doubt that the Brisbane player in the tackle reefed at the ball. Michael Beatty, a reprieve after the match against Western Suburbs, exonerated. And that's a fine kick. Finding touch down on the 22, a kick of something like 40 metres. Collins taking the tap. Goulet runs it back towards the blind side. Once again, Ray, we'll see St George looking to set their big men out right. Goulet has taken one up there. He'll drop back to the blind side. And this man, Priddle, oh. has been hit very hard and it's been deemed high. Tony Priddle taken with a coat hanger. Gilmeister's been told to come back. Well, we see Priddle taking an inside ball here. Well, that is high. It started, started below the chin, but certainly Gilmeister's arm did go up. And that is 
that's sailing close to the wind with the, the current climate of head high tackles Trevor Gilmeister Peter Coyne taking the first points attempt for the game. Strikes it. The touch judges are getting away. No goal. So St George, an opportunity that's gone begging for them. Nil all in Sunday Night League. Well, it's been a poor start by the Brisbane team so far Ray they've made a couple of mistakes down in their own territory and we see Michael Potter beating the first tackle there and looking a little bit disorganized and Alan Langer really is going to have to take charge this is Pickin taking it up and a hit and spin and a handoff out the back for Collins St George now working 10 meters into Brisbane's area Barnhill the ball comes away kicked the head by St George the referee waiting to apply the advantage to Brisbane but they're not gaining any as it uh, turns out and they'll come up with the scrum feed just inside their own quarter. Paul Hoff is getting some attention as uh, Alan Langer works this scrum. Kevin Walters. And an ominous sign for Paul Hoff getting some treatment for the shoulder. He's actually coming to the sideline now. That's been a problem for him all season. He looks like he will be leaving the field for the Broncos. Well, there shouldn't be any problem. Chris Johns would just go into the centres and uh, that will push Julian O'Neill back to fullback, a position that we've become accustomed to seeing him in. Brisbane, seven or eight metres short of the halfway mark and away for Langer. Long ball out for Kevin Walters, over the head of Renoff, bad pass, and this is Cameron Wade. Barnhill. Pickin. Getting it away for Goldthorpe. Peter Coyne. Goulet out wide. Trying to get the pass away for Michael Beatty. Ball goes down and across to Brisbane. Well, they're an enormous pack of forwards, this St George team. Going forward, they've got some good second phase playing go going there. Goldthorpe backing up, was able to pick up. Scott Goulet, but we have one player now coming to the, sh the looks like the blood bin. There it is, the cut above the eye of Tony Priddle. So let's take stock. Paul Hoff, off at the moment, replaced by Chris Johns, and now Priddle goes to the blood bin. 44 going on, Neil Tierney had a lot of first grade experience, but what an unfortunate break there for Paul Hoff popped his shoulder and there was no one within, within Cooey of him. He, he's done that without an, an opposition player being within 10 metres as another penalty awarded by David Manson this side Peter Coyne court for inside the 5 metres. Is it ironic that Manson is dealing out some penalties in the 5 metre area? Common talk in rugby league that David won't have the third origin match because of his failure to keep them apart in origin 1. Lazarus goes ahead. Well I don't think Paul Hoff touched the football in his time on the ground and again, we see some loose play. 32 metres out from the St George line. Well, this is the incident where the ball was actually towed through. No advantage played. He's, he's put his shoulder out there, reaching down for the football. I know how he feels. It, it's certainly very suspect. This... Hello! The scrum has erupted. A couple of the big fellows coming together. Sorry, Pete, I interrupted you there, but uh, for a moment I thought all hell was going to break loose. Nothing much in it, really, as it turns out. Now we see the scrum about to be set by... Well, there's the, the first punch thrown by the number 10 for St George, and that's Guy Picken. What about Gilmeister? He broke out of the scrum and started dealing them from where the halfback normally stands. Well, the penalty's certainly going to go Brisbane's way here. They have made plenty of mistakes at the start of this game. Interesting to see if they'll decide to kick the goal here or go for touch. 
Let's keep in mind here that uh, though it's from a scrum, you can kick for goal from foul play. And this is a foul in the scrum as opposed to, say, the differential penalty for a normal scrum breach. The Sandboy is built for comfort, not for speed. One of the best strikers of the ball in the game, Terry Madison. And uh, still using the old-fashioned way of kicking for goals. Isn't it refreshing? Well, quite a difficult kick, this one. A big in goal area here at the Adelaide Oval. And if there is a breeze out there, it probably is going just a, a bit against Terry Madison. So he'll have to put this one well and truly dead. If he doesn't kick the goal, he has missed the goal. No, no points, and that would have been against the run of play. No score. St George, they've had one shot. So too Brisbane. And we're locked up at nil all. Early minutes of Sunday Night League. Well, Peter mentioned the in goal being deep here at the Adelaide Oval. It would seem that Alan Langer would know that. We measured it this morning, 11 metres, and I think that's the maximum. Well, if anyone's going to take advantage of it, it will be Alan Langer with his short kicking game. And once again, kicking is going to be very important here this afternoon. We've seen a lot of mistakes early, so really field position is going to be paramount for both teams. Keating. Strong involvement in the opening exchanges. And that's a very, very big five metres by the referee, David Manson. Lazarus with a little handoff, finding home. 40 metres away now from the St George line. Kerrod Walters ducks out towards that blind side and finds this mountain of a man, Brett Plowman. Brad Mackay did well. Plowman tried to get it back in field. He did, but he found the wrong jumper. Out and away from dummy half goes Wade, the ringer on the left flank. Pickin goes ahead. Lazarus first man up, Hone second. As Collins gives a little handoff away for Neil Tenney. Goldthorpe comes up towards halfway. With the troubles at Western Suburbs have now got on themselves, wouldn't Warren, Lyon, Warren Ryan like to have him back at the, the Magpie headquarters? Peter Coyne away, and Pickin got a ball that he wasn't expecting. Collins goes to ground under the weight of numbers. And just in that short passage of play, we've seen one of the pluses of St George's, Peter Coyne, kicks the ball down, well taken by Michael Hancock, but they've got big men who can go to the line and then offload, and they've done that very well so far to the likes of Noel Goldthorpe and Peter Coyne. Good run by Hancock, he's taken play back to the 22. And again, young Keating is asked to take it out. 108 kilograms of him. And stands, uh, stands very tall. Played President's Cup for the major part of 1991. One reserve grade game. And the penalty against St George for uh, loitering in the, uh, the tackle on Hone. Yeah, Brad McKay's the man here. Probably one of the most experienced players in the side behind Michael Beattie, and he's just overdone it that little bit. Just a cover of cloud working its way over Adelaide at the moment, but apart from that, as I said at the top of the show, an absolutely beautiful day for a promotion launched by the New South Wales Rugby League and assisted, of course, in no mean fashion by the South Australian League. Contact lens problem again here, it seems, for Mark Hone. Away for Langer, Madison, he strikes the ball inside the 32. Langer goes left, he runs decoy. Kevin Walters gets it away, but it's a forward pass to Chris Johns. Well, it must have been only uh, minutely forward. A very marginal decision, this one. Well, there it is, he's thrown it one side of the line and it has been taken the other side, so a fair enough decision there by the referee. That's the 32 metre line, St George's end of the paddock that you can see. Cricket purists would say, wash your mouth out, this is not a paddock. I agree, I apologise. And there's a mistake made from the scrum win from St George, and that's a good break for the Broncos. 
They haven't been able to control possession down here, and that's what they have to do. Work it for six, put a kick up, but just try and get some ball security in their game. Keating. Quite a, quite a name to take through life with him, particularly in the world of rugby league. Lang up. Long ball for Renoff. Well read out wide by St George. In fact, it was uh, Rex Turp that read the play. Lang up. And St. George come up with it, a freakish take there by David Barnhill. Langer was going to work through with that grubber. As I said to you earlier, a very deep in goal, 11 metres of it. Goldthorpe with an in and away, looking for Beattie. On that particular occasion, Langer probably wasn't looking to go in goal as much as behind the defensive line. But the far winger, Cameron Wade, is picked up. A good cover defence there from Brisbane. But Noel Goldthorpe does play in the front line, so Langer may pers persist with that tactic. Three sets of hands through to Peter Coyne. Oops! Hold the phone! He's called play on. That was Terry Madison going high. Well, Mark Coyne, felled by Terry Madison. The play allowed to go, I thought, for a moment. Well, you talk about a freakish catch. Trevor Gilmeister has just come up with one that the cricketers at the Adelaide Oval would have certainly been proud of. And that Clowman down the far side, the big man showing good speed and again good cover coming across Michael Beattie. 25 metres out from the St George line. They've got a big back line, Langer picks it up on the half volley. Now Kerrod Walder, Kevin Walters, he's on the merry-go-round and down he goes. No gain in ground, he's hurt. Yeah, he's going to be hurt there. He has swung right round into a St George defensive player coming through. It was a nasty, nasty accident there and that's exactly what it was. We'll see, he's swinging around. Michael Beattie, again, the play coming through, he's taken his knee. Oh, has he ever? He's from a, another angle, looking for support. Decides not to throw the tackle, and very unfortunate to take Michael Beattie's knee right with his head. Very heavy knock on Kevin Walters, and as you can see, he's very groggy. Heavily concussed in the tackle. Keating. Still no score on the board. Madison turning it inside for home. They're about uh, 30 metres away from the line. Langer. Julian O'Neill is onside as he chases this kick. Up they go. Michael Potter has come down with it. He's come down with it on the second attempt and he was very t determined the way he went in. Got a good run up. Wasn't able to catch it with the first grab but cleaned it up with the second. Wade. This is the take by Potter. He got uh, hampered by Michael Beattie getting involved. Play out to the 32-metre line. St George's end of the Adelaide Oval. Saints running away from the cricket scoreboard end. And Kevin Walters has been assisted for the field and another replacement for Brisbane already onto the field, Darren Plowman. Will go on. Interesting to see just what they do positionally with, with two replacements made early in this match. Julian O'Neill back at fullback now. In fact, Pat Savage is going to go on. They've changed their mind, the Brisbane bench. Hancock wrestled down by three St George players. All of them wearing those um, micro thigh pad type uh, shorts. And uh, Saints take it down to the 22 metre line. Good attacking position for the Dragons, played by Barnhill. Well, I thought Barnhill had men outside there. He's seen to create a three-man overlap after the Brisbane mistake but decided to go to ground with the ball. Goldthorpe changing the point of the attack. Goulet goes up hard. He's pulled down only about 10 metres out. Away now through Goldthorpe's hands. Peter Coyne. Short ball now for uh, Barnhill again. Gets a magic ball inside for Peter Coyne. Scooped up on the run by Goldthorpe. He flicks it out now. And it's Rex Turk. He gets it down. Oh, that's a magic try. That's a magic well, that's excellent ball skills by all the people involved in that try. We started when David Barnhill was able to get in behind the line. Could have gone a penalty to St George there. One of his, his support players was taken out before he was able to offload. But Goldthorpe did a marvellous job. Here's Barnhill taking the defence on, slips in behind, gets one back inside to Peter Coyne. Well, it wasn't a penalty. It was Mark Coyne tripping over one of the other players. But Goldthorpe picked it up on the fly. The one-arm flick out to Turp. And what a great piece of, of play there by the St George team. Some great rugby league skills in this try. Players supporting others. 
and that's one example of it. And then look at this, the one-handed pick-up by Goldthorpe, done with such confidence, he shows the flick pass to Terp, and he strains his way over the line and plants it down. Peter Coyne with the conversion, it's going away, no goal, so St George leading the Brisbane Broncos by four points to nil. Well, the first try to St George, and really that probably goes with the run of play. But both teams showing a willingness to move the football. Augers very well for the crowd here in Adelaide. There's a, a good hit there from Trevor Gilmeister. Potter. Out to his quarter. And certainly have been impressed by this new man Keating in the Brisbane team. He's had come up with eight tackles and seven hit-ups early in this game, so his work rate isn't to be questioned. But again, another mistake, and that has been a part of this match. Plenty of mistakes from both teams early in the tackle count. This is how it happened. Well, he's stolen and the ball. That's got to be a penalty. Well, exactly. Julian O'Neill, after Brisbane win the scrum, is brought down about 30 metres out from the line. They continue to the right for Mark Hone. Kerrod Walters into dummy half. Gilmeister running a decoy back for Madison, now Langer. Langer! He's inside the corner! Now, Savage! Savage! He gets it down! Brisbane have struck back very quickly. Well, put it down to the brilliance and the great evasive skill of the halfback, Alan Langer. Really didn't appear to be anything on. They hadn't created an overlap by any means. Four points all, Brisbane have hit back straight away. And Langer pretty much did it all himself. Got in behind the line. A simple back line move. Langer took the defence on. A poor miss there from David Barnhill and positioned his winger perfectly. Number five, who's just come into the game, Pat Savage, crosses with his first touch of the football. And here we see it from front on the little dummy inside, and that's just a very bad miss there from David Barnhill. Perfect torpedo pass to the outside man and no trouble putting the ball down. Pat Savage uh, scoring his first try for the season. And as Peter said, only just into the game, really. Madison's got uh, a wide-angle kick. 23 out. And one metre in from touch. Grandstand side of the ground. Madison. Can he convert the try scored by Savage? Left the boot okay. Is it coming around? Just wide. So the goal kickers are having an unhappy start. Four points all now. And apart from the evasion of Alan Langer, it again showed his great strength for such a small man was able to really push David Barnhill off. He's very difficult to tackle, got a low centre of gravity, but very, very strong, and people can underestimate that. Peter Coyne starts us off again, and uh, down it comes for young Keating, Sean Keating, to bring it back. 15 metres out from his own line. Kerrod Walters working with Ploughman, the big winger on the far side. This is uh, Gil Meister, pulled down by Barnhill and also by Scott Goulet. But he did manage to get it out to the 32 metre line. Saints are inside the five again. Penalty goes to the Broncos. Langer finding the line just across the halfway mark. Not getting as much ground as he probably wanted. Lazarus. Kerrod Walters, his brother off the field, heavily concussed. And with his brother off the field, we see Julian, Julian O'Neill has slotted into the 5'8 position. And Michael Hancock is in the centres off the wing. Langer. Away from Julian O'Neill. This is um, Hancock in the centres. Doing some fine work. I oh, beat four of them. Down to the 22 line. Johns, they, they've stacked the blind side, oh, cut out ball, Savage, he gets a double, well, what a pass 
by Gilmeister. Did he mean it or not? I don't know. I think he did mean it. And the man who caught it, hasn't he got some speed? I know he's only had to travel five or ten metres for both of his tries, but he showed great speed there once he got the good ball from Gilmeister. And this is going, we see Renoff goes through as a decoy. That took about four players out of the play. And Savage able to beat Michael Potter, a despairing dive in the corner. They'll be calling him Alf Gilmeister. Well, I remember a pass he's thrown in a game, a, a flick pass around his body, probably one of the best pass I've seen on a football field. He's backed it up there with, with the second man play to give his winger a free run to the line. The Broncos leading now by eight points to four with the kick to come. None out of two thus far for Terry Madison. Again, he's 23 out. One in from touch. Identical mound to the one he used earlier to convert or try to convert the Savage try. And he's put in an identical kick. No change in the scoreline. 8-4 in favour of Brisbane. Play about to get underway again off the boot of Peter Coyne. You said that Hancock was in the centres, Peter. He may have been, I think, for a brief moment, but I think now he's folded back to full back. Well, I think from scrum possessions, they're actually bringing Hancock up into the line, but it looks like he has dropped back into the position first occupied by Paul Hoff. But he is going to roam around. You know, we saw in the state of origin fixture he was looking for one and two passes off the ruck, and that's the kind of game we're going to see once again from Michael Hancock. By the way, he played a part in that try because he put St George back on their heels. Well, very much so, and... Uh, Gilmoist has had a, a very enterprising start to this game. He's come up with one head-high tackle, which was penalised. But apart from that, he's defended very strongly, and he is a good player with the football in his hands. Kerrod Walters plays the ball 10 metres short of halfway. Madison scampers out from dummy half to put the kick in. Potter is there to bring it back outside the 32-metre line, or not quite. Wade. Away from Collins, Goldthorpe steps off the right. Always looking to unload the ball, Goldthorpe. He's a good player to follow through the rucks. Good set of hands, Barnhill, Beattie. Langer arrests him and gets an assist there from Gilmeister. 40 metre line. Tenney offloading for Goldthorpe. Five tackles gone. Collins sprays the ball across wide and Peter Coyne punches it down towards Brett Plowman's wing. Here's the big fellow winding up. Gets through the tackle of Brad Mackay. Forces Rex Turp back as he meets him head on. Crowd love it. They like a fast big man over here just like they do anywhere else in the world. Johns. Home. We're starting to get a bit of a roll on here, Brisbane. Both Chris Johns and Plowman made good ground. Now the forward's taking over, and they're just starting to settle back into their game a little bit better than we saw earlier in the match. Controlling possession, a good kicking game at the end, and Langer pulling the strings. Bad bounce there for uh, Potter. Goldthorpe has to dive on it. Now Potter sweeps it away for Mark Coyne, and further on with Babiti to take it. 15 metres further down the ground. Pulled down by Kerrod Walters. Good tackle it was too. Wade. Potter. Thought about passing but held it back for Pickin because he got himself offside. Peter Coyne, he's got a nice set of hands delivering that ball for Goulet. That's the halfway line, five tackles. And there's no doubt Brisbane have targeted Scott Goulet as a danger man and Peter Coyne. Every time either of those players touch the football, the Brisbane players are getting through very, very quickly. They put a kick down, picked up by Savage, and again, a great turn of speed to get him in field 15, 20 metres. Pat Savage, scorer of both tries for Brisbane to lead eight points to four. Langer starting to run with the ball. Well, scheming. He'll be, be disappointed Renoff didn't run into that gap then. He, he half created it for him, but Renoff dropped off the play. It certainly opened up an, an opening outside one of the St George defenders. Cheating plays it for Kerrod Walters. Glenn Lazarus goes ahead. Barges over the halfway line. They're good yards. Kerrod Walters. 
through Gilmeister for Madison. This is Hone running very strongly, getting a short pass. Five tackles gone. Langer comes into the play. Sends it down towards that left-hand corner. Potter's across there for it. And has Potter got himself a shepherd here? Referee says no. Tackler was Chris Johns. Wade. Saints back out to the 22, but the territory breakdown in the last 10 minutes of play would be astronomical towards Brisbane. The game certainly has swung that way, and, and the enthusiasm level also has picked up with Brisbane, and if anything, dropped off with the St George team. Their support play isn't anywhere near as effective as it was early on. Here we see Brad Mackay taking it up. The only man following, as he's done all day, is, is Noel Goldthorpe. Brad Mackay, a player that St George needs very much in this game to show the way. Hancock. Away and around. And another. Kenny beat a man. Collins is left to bring him down eventually. 8 4 to Brisbane. Renock. Renock tries to bust them. Five metres into St George's area. Langer goes to the right, steps off the right foot. Now there was a player held there. This is a penalty. And a little bit of a difference of opinion out there with a couple of the players, but this is a penalty for Brisbane. A player not in possession, held back out of the play. Well, I'm not surprised that Alan Langer is kicked for touch here as we see the replay. Well, that was Scott Goulet coming in. Keating. Seven metres from the line. Brisbane looking for their third try. Madison. They're in the centre of the ground. Players evenly spread left and right. They fold from right to left for Lazarus. Three metres out. And Brett Plowman setting himself behind the ruck area. They'll be looking for him up the middle. Here, Here he, he is comes. now, Peter. Plowman goes for it. I think he might have snared it. He has. Brett Plowman gets the try. Well called, still up. Well, why wouldn't you be looking for Brett Plowman close to the line? He's been a handful for the St George defence all afternoon. And he's come up the middle of the ruck there from an inside ball from Kerrod Walters getting out from dummy half. And just too much size, too much power. Got down low and that helped as well. Look at that. He's gone straight through Scott Goulet, carried him back over the line. Unstoppable from that distance. And he's got down low and that's important. Gets the ball down there. Well, there it is, no doubt. The referee was in reasonable position. And he did take his time before rewarding it, but he had no doubts. Brett Plowman scores for the Broncos, their third for the day. 12 points to four. Madison gets an easy one now. Madison from right in front. He adds the extras, and St. George down to Brisbane at the moment by 14 points to four. Pickens coming off the field, and Priddle goes back into the action out of the blood bin. Plenty of work to do now for St. George. As we approach half time, 10 points behind on the scoreboard. Brisbane this year have a very, very good defensive record. That was something they had been criticised before in previous seasons. But they've arrested that problem. Only had 90 points scored against them in the season to date. That's a good record. 10 Winfield Cup points on the board already for Brisbane. And he lost the two matches this year to Penrith and Illawarra. George, of course, have lost their last two to Balmain and Western Suburbs. And they'll lose a third if they don't stop this Brisbane play the ball from, from being allowed to be played so quickly. They're really getting a roll on, and once a team like Brisbane, with the talent that they have in the attacking department, get a roll on, they're almost unstoppable. St George have to slow this game down. Potter opting to use Cameron Wade to take it out. Potter obliged to go for a run himself now. I got the, uh, or I have the feeling that Michael Potter needs to inject himself into the play more. 
Not that they've had a great share of possession, but it is a player like him and Brad Mackay, as I mentioned earlier, that they need. Beatty does well, running off a Collins pass. Goulet, Goldthorpe. Savage folding back together with Hancock. Hancock at full back. Comes back towards the 22 line. Well, a good chase here from St George, but it's a pretty tough call with their kicking game. They basically have to kick the ploughman or Hancock, or Savage has got great speed. So they've got a tremendous kick return at the moment out there, the Brisbane team. Home. But that's the problem. The, the easy yards up the middle. We see some more now taken by Kerrod Wallace. Could have almost been a penalty against Noel Goldthorpe for offside. Brisbane with three plays, almost back to the halfway mark. Langer, nobody sweeping. As it turns out, Wade came in off his wing to cover. Held on the halfway mark for the Saints. Goulet. Well, he had no choice. He had to run from dummy half because there was no one coming through. They're looking tired on half time, St George. They had to do a fair bit of defence, but the enthusiasm certainly isn't there. Collins. Lazarus launching himself into the tackle. Tierney. Bumping run by Tierney. This is Rex Turp. Just outside the 22 line. Five tackles gone for the Saints. Goldthorpe putting the ball through the hands now. And good hands they are. Out by Pagule. Gets it away. It'll be play on. Kenyon Way puts it on the foot. And it'll go over the dead ball line just before Cameron Wade arrives. Oh, gee, Michael Hancock flirted with that deep in goal. Yeah, but he did the right thing. Knew that the play was going to go long, the ball was going to go long. Good option taken by the St George team, but Hancock had it pretty well covered. Never any doubt in his mind it was going over. Gilmeister. Renoff. <laughs> Lazarus. Langer. Julian O'Neill. Knock on at the dummy half. Only a tiny one, but uh, referee Manson picks it up. So the scrum will go down for St George to feed, just on the Brisbane side of halfway. Well, that came off his boot. That's a tough decision against Brisbane. It is right on half time, so they'll be hoping they don't pay a fuller penalty. <laughs> Goldthorpe running across the ground, looking for runners. Now he finds Mark Coyne. He gets into space. Gets it away now. Red McKay. Michael Beattie. Beattie gets it away. Can St George carry on? Breaks down, 15 out. And it goes for Peter Coy now. Five metres from the line. St George, desperate for points, coming up towards half-time. Collins, Goldthorpe. They go back to the blind side for Goulet. Big Goulet is held. With the line, as you can see, just metres away. Collins. Goldthorpe. Coming in from the blind side is Tierney. Still, they're unable to break that Brisbane defensive line. Well, they've got to run one now on the last tackle. Try and create something out wide, and Peter Coyne's a man that they'll be looking to do so. Here he is, holding it back up. Well, it's a penalty, head-high tackle. Potter coming into the back line. Julian O'Neill, I feel, is the tackler. Michael Potter's clutching at his knee. So, anxious moments here for Julian O'Neill and for Michael Potter, more importantly. Well, I don't think we're going to see anything more than a penalty. Potter was coming in from behind Peter Coyne. May have been obscured to the defender. Well, he's got outside him. No, I, I, he took him high, but he did grab him around the around the jersey area. No doubt about that, but the penalty's been given anyway. 
when you see it on the replay, it got him around. Oh, St. George! Kirk! Desperate pass inside, but he's in the touch. Now, the touch judge's flag has gone up. When Rex Turp went dangerously close to the corner, here it is. This play is the one that goes into touch. That's yeah, the one. No question about it. Good piece of touch judging. Collins couldn't believe it as he strode over for a try. And I wonder if that's going to play a role later on, turning down two points there. Ten points in arrears. They opted to take the quick tap. Nearly came up with the right result. Madison. Brisbane just shutting it down now as we come up to half-time. Gilmeister. Goulet way over the top there of Barnhill's tackle. Now Lazarus. Julian O'Neill. Potter goes back inside his own 10 to field this ball. Gets it back beyond the 22. There's the siren. That's the end of the first half with the Brisbane side scoring three tries and leading St George by 14 points to four. Welcome back to the Adelaide Oval. We're a very good crowd, sees so Brisbane leading St George 14 points to four. Plenty for the Saints to do in this second half. Quite a few mistakes in that first 40 minute period. You see the penalties going Brisbane's way, five to three. A lot of those against the five metres. Scrums all locked up, three all. A lot of tackles made by St George, 135 to 87. Referee David Manson calls time on. Second half of proceedings with St George guarding the uh, Sir Donald Bradman stand into the ground. You know, that big tackle count was led by Scott Goulet, Goulet for St George. He came up with 18, Tierney Collins and Mackay all on 16. And for Brisbane, the new boy Keating leads away with 14. As we see another mistake early on from St George, Lazarus on 11. So some plenty of work being done up front. Well, Brian Smith, the St George coach, would be tearing his hair out. The number of mistakes St George has made, the cough-ups, they all seem to be happening around their own 22. Gilmeister. Well, realistically, if Brisbane are the next team to score, especially a try, I think the game's over. Gerard Walters, a little handoff for Keating. Cut down by Collins around the legs. Mackay over the top. Hone. That's the 10-metre line. A little handoff that went backwards through the legs of Gerard Walters. Keating. Five tackles. Langer calling for it. Waiting it into the end goal, a race down there by Plowman. But uh, Cameron Wade it is that rakes it over the dead ball line. Brisbane will come back with the ball for six more attempts. Madison, 45 metres out, giving it to Hancock to take back. Almost running straight through St George. Walters, Madison, busy game from Terry Madison today. Gerard Walters, scampering out from dummy half. He's done that a few times. Langer, Gilmeister. Getting close to the line again as Langer works it out for Julian O'Neill. Back inside for Renard. Renard! He picks up another Bronco try. Well, some great skill once again from this Brisbane team, but all the pressure on St George through their own inability to hold the football. A mistake early in the second half gave Brisbane possession and you just can't hold a team out like Brisbane for six tackles on top of each other as we've seen. There's a little step from O'Neill, got halfway through the gap, Renoff had doubled back inside, beat one tackle and was able to score. It turned out to be a pretty easy try. O'Neill here inside Mackay, Goulet takes him low, well held by 
ran off and he was able to brush through Michael Potter's, Potter's tackle at the end. That may just about wrap it up. A long way to go, but tough to come from behind this Brisbane team. Five tries for the year for Steve Renoff. goals for the year about 10 metres off centre relatively easy kick for Terry Madison and he makes it look that way too doesn't he enlarging that uh, lead now for the Brisbane Broncos they lead St George by 20 points to 4 early stages second half Sterlow, the more we see of Brisbane, what thoughts are flooding through your mind when people talk to you about their chances of taking out the crown this year? Well, I think they've got a very good chance, Ray, and they've shown that they've got a lot of depth, a lot of players in here taking over from the likes of Gavin Allen, who've been on state duty, and they're doing a marvellous job. But for St George, they know that it is capable or possible to come back from a, a big second-half deficit. Of course, Balmain did exactly that against the Saints three weeks ago. So... Uh, they know it can be done, and they'll be looking to be the team to be able to do it this time. As the ball goes back to Julian O'Neill. Charge There's down a charge the down, back to Hancock, and that's six again. Everything going right for the Broncos at the moment. A win here today, of course, would take them to joint premiership uh, lead again. Hone. They're sailing along nicely, aren't they? They seem to be able to do it when they want to do it, and here's Renner putting his foot down again. Savage! He looks for number three. Gets it away for Renoff. He puts it down. Line wide open. And it deserved to try. Again, some poor defence on the fringe of the ruck from St George, but beautiful work there from Steve Renoff and Pat Savage keeping the ball alive. Nearly led to a try. That's the final pass to Renoff. The ball just knocked out from the cover defence. And St George really starting to fall apart defensively. Wade. Tierney takes it ahead. Down on the knee. That's not considered actually from the ground. Played by Collins. Goldthorpe. Getting a shallow kick away. Savage comes back. Well, that's a very poor kick. He's only kicked that one 20 metres. Savage, the Brisbane winger, able to take the ball and regain possession and inside the opposition territory. So, very bad for position. And, and I wouldn't be looking for goals to be kicking anyway. Coins the much longer kicker. He's got to get in position. Keating. Brisbane flooding back down the ground again. Play after play. Gilmeister. St George's record in recent times against Brisbane is pretty good. But it's all coming unstuck as Johns gets it back for O'Neill. He gets it away but Plowman can't take it. Well, again, some work being done on the fringe of the ruck by Julian O'Neill. Fingertip control just came unstuck for Plowman. He'd have probably been taken over the sideline anyway. That's against Brisbane being inside the five at the scrum. Differential penalty goes to the Saints. 43 for St George. Coming on is Matthew Elliott. Barnhill coming off. We've seen a couple of examples here today of why Wayne Bennett has got this huge rating on Julian O'Neill. A couple of things that have happened in the second half in particular. Five-star stuff. This is Elliott. Realistically, Ray, in such a star-studded outfit, there are a lot of players who are unsung heroes in this Brisbane team. Uh, the likes, as you mentioned, Julian O'Neill. Plowman's played well tonight. Terry Madison, I've always thought Brisbane play better when he's on the field. Hone, Gilmeister, they do plenty of work. And, and he's a fine to Sean Keating. There was a rap coming into this game, and he's lived up to that. As Coyne goes up the middle, makes half a break. Elliot, at dummy half, 
away to Goldthorpe. Holds it back and tries to put Friddle through a gap. Langer is there with O'Neill to stop his progress on five. Goldthorpe raking it down towards the Brisbane line. Hancock takes it back. Seldom do you see him stopped on the first tackle, but Wade was able to do it there. Plowman. He's lost it. And a knock on, so St George will get a chance here. They'll have the feed to a scrum 15 metres out from the line. Peter Coyne. Wade is coming off the left wing to try and make the extra man. They do like setting up Scott Goulet on a blind side here. Dummy half run by Brad Mackay. Collins. Elliot. Goulet will be running at Langer if he can get the football. They decide to go wide out through Peter Coyne. Potter coming into the back line. He's missed out. And Peter comes up with the mistake. Savage. Picks up the dregs. Gee, can turn on some speed very quickly. Goes from standing still to full pace in about five metres. Explosive speed off the mark for the young man who scored two tries in the match so far, Pat Savage. Langer. Lazarus out wide. O'Neill. Kerrit Walters. Hone. Gilmeister plays many kilos over his weight, Trevor Gilmeister. Langer's kick, sending Potter back towards the goal mouth. Beatty. St George will play in our Sunday night league next weekend. They meet Illawarra at the uh, Steelers Stadium. And Friday night, it's uh, Eastern Suburbs versus Gold Coast. Just watching Wally Lewis here at halftime, he was introduced to the crowd and he was limping noticeably, so it's to be hoped he'll be in that match. Well, a bit of enterprise shown there by Noel Goldthorpe. Took a leaf out of the book of Alan Langer, dropping a little one over the top. Langer wasn't marker. As Brisbane make another replacement. Aaron Plowman on the field. He replaces Keating. Hancock. Standing up in the line. In fact, standing at 5'8 for that scrum. This is Plowman. So we've got Darren Plowman and Brett Plowman both on the field now. The ball coming towards Plowman's wing, Brett Plowman's wing now. O'Neill with that in and away, he does it very well. You'll be able to pick the difference between the Plowmans. They have, have got different builds as Brett makes good ground up the sideline again. Picks up Julian O'Neill, puts the ball on the boot and cleaned up by the number five Cameron Wade to save another try for St George. The Saints have uh, sent Tony Smith into the game. And it's Michael Beatty, I do believe, that's been replaced. Tony Smith, the brother of St George coach Brian. Mark Coyne. 176 for St George, 114 Brisbane mountainous tackle count for the Dragons but one of the chief reasons for that is they haven't been able to hold the ball for long periods of time last tackle Goldthorpe now that's Walker who's on the field in jumper number 41 Andrew Walker Hancock I was surprised not to see him in the starting lineup in the last game we saw St George go around in against Western Suburbs I thought he was Probably St George's best player that day. And they'll be looking for a bit of inspiration with him coming onto the field. Very good runner of the ball. Brett Plowman. Strength of the man. He's able to make 
something out of nothing normally. Langer spreading it quickly. And Chris Johns almost galloped into a hole. Walker read it well. Covered nicely. Hone. Peter Coyne is now off for the St George side. Langer. Ball tantalisingly bouncing across the line. Wade. And he's got no dummy half. He has now. Matthew Elliott just getting there in time, or was it Tony Smith? Alan, Alan Langer getting a very generous round of applause there from the Adelaide crowd. Three tackles in a row, chased his own kick. And St George have been up, unable to get outside the 22 metres in five tackles. Walk up. Former rugby player from, uh, I do believe, the Randwick Club. And uh, Hancock taking it back outside the 22. I don't think it would matter where you played Michael Hancock. He, he can handle any position and he's one of the most elusive game, one of the most elusive runners in the game. His effort uh, in Origin 2, I think, almost assured him of an Australian jumper. Wayne Bennett, he'd be pretty happy with what these boys have done for him today. Lazarus. Karen Walters. Handing it back for Madison. Five gone again now for Brisbane. Lang up. Little chip there for Chris Johns. He may get a bounce. Walker cleans it up. Back on his own quarter way line, Andrew Walker to play the ball. Some good variation once again from Alan Langer. Has tended to kick long down into the, the bottom corner. But that time opting to kick a little one over the top, not for himself, but for Chris Johns on the fly. Andrew Walker did well to clean up. Mark Coyne. Tierney. Goldthorpe away to Priddle, then back for Goulet. Langer hangs on together with Brett Plowman. Tony Smith is the dummy half. Goldthorpe, plenty of time. Hancock almost ambling across to it. Hancock. Potter brings him down from behind. Langer. Brett Plowman. Going in, taking the work off the forwards. Savage. Not hard to see why he's in the side at the moment, in the Brisbane side. Brian Smith, the St George coach. A worried man. Well, he's got every right to be concerned because, again, easy yards being made here by Brisbane. Four tackles, they've worked the ball 35, 40 metres. We'll get a good kick in here, again off the boot of Alan Langer or Julian O'Neill. It's gone to O'Neill. He just kicks it down, probably not the best kick he's kicked. Michael, Michael Potter takes it, but met by a good line of defence from Brisbane. Wade. Well, they're prepared to just play out the rest of the game in this fashion, Brisbane. They've got plenty of points on the board. They don't have to score too many, but they will if they're on offer. But to George, have got to, they've got to have some inspiration here, a bit of spark or something. They're just going through the motions. They'll probably look to goal for to do so, but really there's no enthusiasm, no support play from St George. Again, a one-out run here. Picking up Priddle, and they're keeping the ball alive, but still not going anywhere. Will they? Did well to take that pass from Goldthorpe. Just into Brisbane's area. Six more tackles has been ruled and a penalty now to St George. Even in kicking for touch, no real urgency at all. You'd think that they were in front and they were trying to wind the clock down. Collins. Dummy to the winger going to the open side, picking up uh, Tierney coming up the blind side. And this big fellow taps it ahead, no marker. 
Now he runs into the wall. Three metres out from the line. Elliot tries to do it. The referee Manson calling timeout. Bloodbin has been ordered. And it's Elliot himself that's uh, been sent to the bin. So Tenney comes in to play the ball. Meantime, Brisbane have been able to get their defensive line set. And a stoppage that St George really didn't need. Goldthorpe away to Mackay. Goulet! Goulet! Very close to the line. Good defence from Brisbane. Lazarus played an important role. St George lose it over the line. A line drop out to get us going from Brisbane. Well, it was like a brick wall there. No way Scott Goulet was going to get through. Mark Hayne bats it over the dead ball line. Line drop out from O'Neill is not a good one. Mackay goes back towards the corner way line. He was looking for a runner, but he couldn't find one. Yeah, he's looked quite tired today, Brad Mackay. I really think the state game has taken plenty out of him. Missed a couple of tackles, which you don't normally see. But St George need to score a try in this set of six or this passage of play to get back into the match. Triddle out wide. <laughs> Goldthorpe. <laughs> Collins. Potter. Goulet. <laughs> Goldthorpe again. Brittle away for Mark Coyne. Cameron Wade inside. Picked up by Elliot. Is it Elliot? Yes, it is. Right. 49. No, it's Smith. Tony, it's Smith. Tony Smith. He gets the try for St George. 20 points to 8 now. Well, last tackle play once again, and it was good support play that time from St George, started by Noel Goldsmith, threw the long ball to Tony Priddle. He was able to get a one-hander away to Mark Coyne. Cameron Wade looked like scoring in the corner himself, but the cover came across, back inside to Tony Smith, and he was able to pull his way out of the tackle from the Brisbane defence. There's the good ball. The one-hander, Coyne turns his back. Some good cover defence there from Glenn Lazarus. I don't know how he got across there. Hancock just didn't have the strength to be able to hold Tony Smith out, and a very important try for St George. Now, Tony Smith, the replacement uh, who came on during the second half, he gets the try that may see a St George resurgence, but uh, they've got a lot of work still to do. Walker. He's got this kick, 24 metres out and five metres in from touch. That's his angle. Walker strikes it, it's coming around nicely, hits the upright. Bad luck for the lad, and bad luck for St George. No change, 20 points to eight in favour of Brisbane. where the seagulls are <laughs> and they go skywards as the St George bring it back didn't really no. work that time right Neil Tierney was there he caught the ball on the full we might just see good passage of play here from St George got their tails up after running in that try they're within 12 they know that they've got to score twice and they have got plenty of time on the scoreboard Michael Potter's pass goes astray Goldthorpe picks it up now he's able to spread it. Andrew Walker, he sees an opening, gets into a bit of space. Rarely has it been there for St George to take. Now they've got a bit of a roll going. Goulet gets it out the back. Dived on there by Collins, the hooker. Five tackles gone. Goldthorpe, Priddle's lurking off his left hip. Kicks ahead for him. Red, though, by Plowman. And uh, a strong game he's had. And uh, 
He's held there by the Dragons. Well, that's a David and Goliath battle, that one. Noel Goldthorpe trying to take Plowman front on. I know who's going to win. He's played very well, Goldthorpe. He's backed up. He's got on a lot of loose stuff that has been thrown by St George. And he's been instrumental in getting St George back into this game. Lazarus. Walters. Picked up by Tony Smith. Play right on the Brisbane uh, 22 line. Hone. Still Brisbane are able to get over the advantage line. And they seem to be doing it with ease. So Neil sends it down. Michael Potter does a bit of a 360 and now he comes out from inside his own quarter. Potter did well. Mackay. Brad Mackay. Good run here by Mark Coyne. He's got Rex Turp with him. Pulled down 22 metres out from the Brisbane line. Well, they'll come wide straight away. They've got the big men outside goal court once again. It'll be a penalty. Ten minutes in the sin bin. That's Glenn Lazarus. Ten minutes in the sin bin. They're under a lot of pressure, Brisbane. They'll be under more now without the big men for 10 minutes. A great attacking opportunity for St George now in this next period of play. Glenn Lazarus in the sin bin for 10 minutes for that incident, ruled as a professional foul by David Manson. So the Saints trailing by 12 points. Collins. They hit that blind side again through Neil Tierney. Elliot. And again, they've got Priddle and Goulet set wide. They're coming that way now. Here's Goulet. Puts it on the ground, does he? And cleaned it up himself. Goulet to play it. Goldthorpe. Goes himself, puts Priddle into a half gap. Priddle pulled down. Three metres from the line. A try here and this match comes alive again. Walker, wrapped up by Langer. Ten metres out from the line. Five tackles gone for the Dragons. Goldthorpe. Goldthorpe goes himself. Gets it inside. Forward. Smith. But he's ruled it forward, the pass to Smith. Yeah, no doubt about that one. Goldthorpe took the defence on. It was the last tackle. Threw back inside, but Smith well and truly in front of the man. It was a forward pass. And now Brisbane's turn to work it out of the danger area and to slow the game down. One player short. Well, it must have been this passage of play that would have had Wayne Bennett concern coming into the game with so many origin players. And uh, this is the vital period, I suppose, from that point of view. And some of those players start to feel the, the wear and tear. Not this man, Lang up. Plowman. Notice that young Keating is getting ready to come on again for Brisbane. Five tackles gone for them now. O'Neill kicks. Priddle went for the charge down. He may have got a hand to it. He did. Turk playing it on the halfway mark. Mark Hone has come off and Keating has gone back on. Mackay. 20 points to 8 in favour of the Broncos. Collins. I worked the blind side again. Coming back for, for Goulet. And this is Goulet with it now. Outnumbered, however. This time he puts it down and a knock-on has been found by Manson. This crowd, uh, crowd today, I would imagine they'd have to be very happy with it. 18,892 at the Adelaide Oval. Manson wants it again. Langer taking his time and feeding the scrum. O'Neill. Geez, these opposition hookers are going to have long legs, haven't they? Well, Alan Langer was in no hurry to get the football in. You actually heard David Manson telling Alfie to get up there and put it in, so he knows the nickname as well. But he's well aware, Alan Langer, that they are a player short and every second can count. 
Savage. What a great performance by him. Pat Savage, two tries. Lang up. O'Neill. Turning it inside for Johns. Over the halfway line. Still going. Promotes the football. Away from Karen Walters to Langer. Cut out ball. Savage. He goes inside the 40. Up inside the 32 now. Just outside the quarter. Five tackles gone for the Broncos. What will Langer do with it? There he goes. A little chip over the top. Collins goes back to clean up for St George. Wade. Well, they're getting a roll on here, St George. Some good quick play. The balls are going wide now, and they do have numbers out there as Renoff is late getting back in defence. Elliott out very wide. Oh. I know they've got to start taking risks, but that was a pass that needn't have been thrown. Renoff, centre of the ground, 22 line on your screen now. Hancock. Karen Walders, Gilmeister, Brisbane looking very dangerous again, nine out for the line, Hancock at first receiver, Brett Plowman on his outside and Darren on his inside. And Alan Langan knows that they need to keep the football so I'd imagine he'd be looking to put it into the in-goal area. They've got to have the football. They don't want to be tackling while they're a playoff. Well, they've gone wide. It'll be up to Julian O'Neill to try and pick up Randolph, who backs it on to Savage. Again, great speed off the mark, but it's last tackle they have handed over. That is surprising. Go, Matty! 20 points to eight then. Goldthorpe. That might have hurt him. He looked like he got a knee in the side of the head. Priddle. Riddle, he busts them, Langer tries to tackle him, now Goulet, Goulet's over the halfway, he's got two to beat, looks for his winger, ah, positioned him beautifully, Wade, Wade goes in to score for St George. Well, it's a magnificent play by the St George big man, and there's one of them, the final pass thrown by Scott Goulet, and he did it very well. Ray pointed out, couldn't have positioned his winger any better to put him in under the black dot. But Tony Priddle made the initial bust. They are up against 12 men, and missed tackles do count. That was Kerrig Walters. Alan Langer couldn't get his hand around, and Goulet able to beat two or three men. They showed great pace for big man. And look at that. Beautiful play. Cameron Wade in under the black dot. This will be converted. Six points of difference. They're right back in this game, St George. This is the try again. The big man, Priddle, he struggled back to his feet. And then look at this. You reckon Priddle's not big, but then Goulet comes onto it like the land of the Giants. And Cameron Wade, he sneaks away after getting a beautiful ball. And St George are back. Walker, he adds the extra two points. And so it's 20 points to 14. The Dragons back with a chance. Darren Plowman has been replaced by Mark Hone as St. George. Bring the ball out. Oh, determined run. Stamp of enthusiasm from Elliott. Six points the difference. Tony Smith. We do have plenty of time left. We are inside the last ten. And the Here's the big men again. Goulet and Priddle again. Yeah, combining very well. They've done that pretty well most of the game, but the gaps are starting to appear now as the defence starts to tire. 20 points to 14 at the Adelaide Oval. Goulet, Priddle again. Oh, they're hunting as a pair. <laughs> Cody Smith appealing for the penalty. Mackay. That's going to find touch, is it? No, it's going to find touch in goal. So it'll come back to the 22 for the restart.
Hone. Keating. Every time he's taken the ball up to them, he's made ground. Coach would be happy with him. Gilmeister to the halfway. And this is something that Brisbane has been able to do all day. Forward after forward. Well over the ad line, all gaining five metres or more. No marker, so Madison goes ahead himself. Home. Was going sideways, then he straightened it. They're way down to the 22 line on four forward plays. Langer, he grubs ahead. Michael Potter fields it. Julian O'Neill brings him down. 15 out from the St George line. Walker. Mark Coyne. A tackle counter starting to come back to normality. St George have still been required to make a lot more. Lazarus is coming back from the sin bin. Mackay. is the big fellow. Brad Mackay has cramped up. And this time you can bet your sweet bippy that he's not telling lies. They don't need to waste time, St George. Collins. Through Goldthorpe. Tierney. Struggling run. Straining his way down to the 40 metre line. Replacements coming on and off here. Hard to keep a track of them all, but Andrew Walker kicks now. Hancock, he goes across. Strong game from him today, Michael Hancock. Very seldom do you see otherwise. Good defence by St George. Walker put them all on side. Savage. It's not the place for the kid to get involved in the heavy traffic. He's too valuable. Lazarus. Karen Walters, Brett Plowman. Barging his way down to the halfway mark. And Lazarus now back on the field for Brisbane, so they've got their full complement of players. Well in the last 10 now. They'll be looking to play good field position, and this is the man they'll be looking to. Alan Langer, screwing on back off the right boot. And this is the corner that they have opted to come on most occasions. Cameron Wade picks up, throws it to Michael Potter, who is hampered at the moment. He was hurt earlier in a tackle. Goldthorpe! Out to the 22. Brad Mackay is off. Keeping the ball alive, the Saints, but there's a wasted tackle. Beattie is back on. Mackay off. St George, deep in their own territory. Goulet. Langer right around the boot laces with that, that throw of his, using the legs and the arms. Played by Collins. Five tackles gone, Walker. Little chip and chase, and uh, O'Neill. He's there and reads it nicely for Brisbane. Gee, I thought he could have run one then. He had numbers outside. There were plenty of cover defence coming across for Brisbane, but they didn't have anyone up in the front defensive line. And they've given up some cheap possession there, St George, right on halfway. Time running out now for St George. Hancock. Keating. Gilmeister. Good run by Gilmeister, some 20 metres. Oh, that's a great run. Great run. Took the forwards head on. Very determined run. Langer once again. Well, he's hit the referee there. Now, the referee has been struck by the ball, and to my knowledge, it will be a scrum, and the attacking side, according to territory, will have the feed here. Goldthorpe. Walker! Now, Kirk! And we catch him, and Savage coming from behind. Will he get him? No! It's a great try to St George! Rex Kirk gets his second for the day! Well, 20 points to 18. Very close to full time, and the kick to come. And again, Noel Goldthorpe did some great work. And can he score a try, Rex Turp? We see Savage coming from behind. We've said how fast he is. Turp showed great speed as well. The ankle tap. 
There's Andrew Walker. He's about to have the kick of goal, so plenty of pressure about to be applied to him, but he picked up turf beautifully on the inside. There was an ankle tap here, but the momentum took him across the try line. Not an easy kick. 20 points to 18, looking to wrap it up. So the attempt at conversion will be taken by Andrew Walker, the try scorer, Rex Turf. Twenty three meters out. The sun starting to set. Walker kicking straight into it. Can the young man bring St George level? Strikes it. And it's just wide. Just wide of the uprights. That will see Brisbane get home in this game. 20 points to 18. Well, it's been a marvellous comeback by the St George team and they'll certainly rue some ineffective defence in the first half allowing the Brisbane team to score quite a few tries we're going to see some great ball movement now in this last minute or so St George, nothing to lose as the two big men, have, they combine once again but the referee's found a forward pass and that'll wrap things up under a minute to go on the clock, a Brisbane feed Alan Langer won't have one against the feed Lost by the Brisbane pack. And they'll just wind things down. So they've snuck home. And it does take us back to that St George decision not to kick the goal in the first half. Was two points on offing. I know that the game changes if they do kick it, but that's what they're going to be beaten by. Plowman. Just inside the 22. Langer. O'Neill. Madison, Adelaide crowd counting it down. Well, St George have really come back, game move, but in vain. But sufficient one would think to bring the crowds back again, should the Winfield Cup be down in Adelaide again soon. Brisbane winning the match, 20 points to 18. 